Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Students, parents, and teachers make an emotional return to the Florida high school where 17 people were killed while the gun debate is heating up on Capitol Hill. I'm in Adobo with all the details ahead. And nearly 25% of all snowmobile deaths in Montana in the last 20 years happened in Cook City. What makes it so dangerous? That's coming up. Good morning, 632 on this Monday. Uh, the entire gang here, um, kind of a nice morning out there. We've been so stunted because of that cold <laughs> weather we had. I mean, that sub-zero temperatures all last week, it's actually Absolutely. where we should be, and it feels just Yeah, balmy. I was telling you earlier, I almost forgot my coat as I was getting out of the car. Right. I was like, ah. It's still cold I'm enough you need that, but yeah. uh, it's a little different than what we've had to deal with. I do expect to see blowing and drifting snow to be a problem uh, later today. <laughs> I wouldn't give you. I have to drive, you know, I have to go year. somewhere, so that's how that's uh, yeah. going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Temperatures into the teens this morning when you factor in the wind chill for the early part of the day. We are starting to see some snow developing in parts of southwest Montana. We've got a little light snow falling this morning at uh, Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. We'll probably have to deal with that off and on through the morning. We'll talk about the impacts that may have coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Now 633 on this uh, Monday, two snowmobilers are safe after falling through thin ice Saturday night on Sealy Lake. According to the Mo Missoula County Sheriff's Office, snowmobilers were on the north end of the lake where the ice is typically thin. Now, after both snowmobiles broke through, the drivers were able to climb out uninjured. One snowmobile, however, completely submerged. Because of the dangerous conditions, crews will have to wait until spring to pull that one out. The other snowmobile was recovered. And this winter has been great for people to like to get out and about and enjoy the snow. But as Winston Greeley shows us in this week's Outdoor Report, too much of a good thing can mean danger in the backcountry. Cook City has a bad reputation as one of the deadliest places in America for avalanches. Every time we have a death, it just shakes this community. It's, it's, it shuts the community down and people stay away and we don't want that. We want to bring people into our community and we want to make sure that they're safe while they're here. In the past 20 years, snowmobiles have become more advanced and powerful, allowing people to travel further into the backcountry and avalanche terrain. Since 1998, there have been 80 fatalities in Montana and 19, so almost 25% were in Cook City. So it gets a lot of traffic, really big terrain there, a lot of snowfall, so just all the ingredients are there to make it a deadly area. To counter the rise of avalanche accidents in Cook City, the Gallatin Avalanche Center, partnered with Montana State Parks, offers a weekly avalanche safety training throughout the winter. We decided to just implement a weekly program where we would have an instructor give basic awareness talk on Friday nights and talk about avalanche terrain and rescue if something bad does happen and then give a, a weekly conditions update. With snow enthusiasts coming from around the world, this avalanche safety training has been a success. In the two years of the program, there have been no avalanche fatalities in the area. We really feel that these avalanche trainings, the lectures, and the infield training is helping. It is saving lives. I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. Now, the avalanche safety training courses are go going on until the end of March. Shifting gears just a bit this morning, the debate on gun control heating up on Capitol Hill as the National Rifle Association now pushing back against some modest changes the president suggested last week. Now this as high school students in Parkland, Florida returned to campus over the weekend in an effort to ease the transition back to class. CBS's Hena Doba has more. 17 people dressed as angels standing by a makeshift memorial greeted students returning to Stoneman Douglas High School almost two weeks since the shooting that took 17 lives. The students were allowed back onto campus yesterday for the first time to pick up backpacks and other belongings left behind. Coming back here is hard. I lost some of my friends. The three-story building where the shooting took place has been cordoned off. The rest of the school will reopen for classes Wednesday. Some parents, though, say they'll struggle with the drop-off. I was here to pick him up that day. It was uh, the longest eight hours of my life, and I'm, uh, I'm not ready to let him go yet. 
On Capitol Hill, the debate over gun control looks to rev up this week. Yesterday morning, an NRA spokesperson pushed back against some suggestions President Trump made last week, like raising the age limit to buy certain weapons. The NRA well, has made their position clear. Well, so, but let me just say mm -hmm. the position is you do not want to raise the age. That's what the NRA came out and said. The president, who will meet with the nation's governors today on a variety of issues, says gun control will be at the top of the agenda. We'll be talking about Parkland and, and the horrible event that took place last week. Congress, back in session today after 10 days off, is also under pressure to revisit gun legislation. Hannah Doba, CBS News. Now, President Trump, who has recently promised to push for tightening background checks, has also said he supports arming certain teachers and other faculty inside those schools. In other news this morning, Bozeman police are investigating a report of sexual assault that happened Friday night on South Church Street and East Story Avenue. A woman claimed she was walking about 1.30 in the morning when a male suspect physically restrained her and touched her. She was able to resist and the suspect took off on foot through the Pete's Hill parking lot. Officers searched the area but did not find the suspect. He's described as a white male, 5 foot 9, with red or brown hair, possibly a beard, was wearing a black hoodie and sweatpants at that time. If you know anything about this case, you're asked to contact Crime Stoppers Hotline, that number 406-586-1131. And Democrats got together in Bozeman on Saturday evening to meet voters and debate some hot topics with a moderator and a former Supreme Court Justice Mike Wheat. MTN's Morgan Davies reports from the de that debate. Four of the five candidates running in the U.S. Democratic House primary took the stage at the Rialto to debate different topics like health care as well as gun control. John Heenan, Kathleen Williams, Grant Keir, and Jared Patitano debated the hot topic issues, but they also saw this debate as an opportunity to get to know the voters. Uh, this is a major population center and uh, a lot of votes to be had here in Gallatin County, so uh, as everywhere, it's important to show up and let people kick the tires. In Montana, we take pride in having access to the people that we want to elect and the people that we have elected. This is exactly how we can do that. Um, citizens and voters can hear how we differ or are similar on the issues. There are three styles of questions given to candidates, including rapid fire yes or no questions, which MTN's political analyst, Dr. David Parker, says was very telling for each candidate. A lot of debates, sometimes it's only 30 seconds a minute. The negative is there wasn't any back and forth between the candidates, which is something I think that's exciting and that's interesting and I really wanted to see. But we did get a good sense of the candidates, uh, I think, overall. The five candidates will face off in the June primary, and the winner of that will take on incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte. Reporting in Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now, another candidate, Linda Moss, did not attend on Saturday night's debate. She was in Billings for a gun control community forum. Well, it's a dream for a lot of people, including yours truly, to one day work on a project for NASA. Five students from Hot Springs High School are doing just that. MTN's Russ Thomas shows us how. I've heard about NASA a lot, and you always hear about NASA. I never thought I could be part of it. You heard that right. Five Hot Springs High School students were invited to join an exclusive group of 400 from around the world to work with NASA Globe scientists. The students representing Hot Springs are collecting atmospheric data every school day, specifically in helping NASA satellites discern the difference between cloud cover and snow. Basically, it gives us the opportunity to be citizen scientists, and Hot Springs was assigned the atmosphere, so we're researching cloud cover, ground temperature, and things like that. The reward for these girls is an opportunity of a lifetime. A two-week trip to Killarney, Ireland early this summer to meet with top NASA scientists and fellow student citizen researchers around the globe to present their findings. We're going to present our data and our findings for a scientific question we we're answering. And then we also are watching these other kids from around the world and learning what they learned. To being able to get up in front of 400 students and countless adults and NASA scientists and present their research is huge. Hot Springs High School teacher Bo Herman got the ball rolling on this opportunity last summer when he helped write the grant that led to this opportunity. He says the benefit for the students of this opportunity will extend long past their summer trip to Ireland. Being able to work with NASA and put that on their resume um, or college application is huge. It's going to open doors for them, you know, down the road career-wise or collegiate-wise wherever they want to go. Of course, pulling off a trip like this one is no easy feat. The students need to raise a total of $15,000 to help fund this once-in-a-lifetime experience. The good news is, 
that this small community is already working hard to raise the money necessary to give these five young ladies an opportunity they won't forget. Russ Thomas, MTN News, Hot Springs, Montana. Very cool. We wish him the best. Uh, by the way, this will be the first time any of the five uh, students from Hot Springs have ever traveled outside of the United States. Oh, wow. So it's a big deal. This that's is a big trip. Exciting. 15 grand a piece. So good luck, and uh, uh, I'm excited for him. I just Lifelong that's awesome. memories right Very there. cool. That's Who incredible. knows? Career could come from all of this, hey. too. This is one of those life changing things. So. Maybe they'll bring you along. Who knows? Hey, we heard that chat uh, line. The guys always want to work I've, for NASA. You never know. You never know. Oh, that's great. We would love for, if you could stick around. Next, it is your weekly spotlight of Under the Big Sky. Today, we turn to Red Ox Manufacturing in Billings. But first, we head to New York and check in with Gail King for a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning to you ahead on CBS this morning. We're in Tennessee and near Louisville with the worst damage from deadly tornadoes and flooding. And millions of teenagers have tried vaping, even though it's illegal for them to buy e-cigarettes. Why scientists concerned over safety are pushing for the FDA to crack down. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.